Yeah, g'day, it's uh, Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just thought I'd do a video today um, on the, the audio amp, which will be the, the first part of the, the circuit. So just basically breadboarded up here. Um, and we'll just go through and have a look at uh, what we've done. So the circuit itself is um, two stages. It's a, um, a, a 2N3904 audio preamp here. Um, then feeding in through the master volume into an LM386 N-1. So um, we'll look at the uh, the design of this circuit, and then we'll have a look at. Um, well, in fact, we'll start off with the with the um, 386. So straight off the data sheet, what I've decided to do is just um, take the example circuit that comes off the data sheet for the the LM386 N-1. Um, and I'm just using here the one with a voltage gain of 20. Um, the only difference with this circuit here, um, the input which will be coming from the mixer will come directly in. And uh, this value here, I've used a 0 0.047 microfarad capacitor. Otherwise, everything's the same. And we'll have a look at the effect of this, um, as well as some decoupling capacitors on the VCC line. So that there... Um, is essentially what we see down here um, and no, no differences to that. So in terms of the uh, the 3904 circuit so what I've decided to do is um, not too scientific, I've just basically uh, used a few rules of thumb for the design of that one. So just using a, uh, a voltage divider biaser, biasing common emitter um, amplifier here um, and when I do Currents. I work on electron flow, that's what I was taught way back when I joined the Air Force, so my current always starts from the bottom going up. So rules of thumb, I was going to take for the 3904, um, at 10 milliamps I'm going to set um, the, the current through the device, the uh, collector current, and we'll just take a beta generically of, of 100, and we're going to set the voltage at the emitter to be a tenth of the VCC, so so a tenth of 12 volts will be 1.2 and we'll set the collector to be halfway between 0 and 12 so we'll set that at half VCC so in terms of the circuits um, the maths, so the first part we're working out the emitter um, resistor so for that uh, it's just Ohm's law so we've got a tenth times 12 volts here or 1.2 divided by 10 milliamps we get 120 ohms. 120 ohms is a standard value resistor, so we'll just use that one. For R2, the voltage across that is going to be the voltage here plus 0 0.7, so 1.2 plus 0 0.7, so a tenth times 12 plus 0.7. And for this voltage divider biasing here to be um, what's colloquially called stiff, we want to have at least 10 times the base current flowing through here. So again, for electron flow, if my electron current's coming through here and up to the positive rail, and I want to have 10 times through here, so what I'll do is I'll set 10 times through R2, and then that plus the additional base current will be 11 times the base current through R1. So go coming back to R2, so again, the voltage across it, a tenth times VCC is that voltage, plus 0 0.7 gets me to here, divided by 10 times the collector current divided by beta because the base current equals the collector current divided by beta um, and that turns out to be 1900 ohms and we'll use a standard value of 2000 it's close enough now the, across R1 let me just zoom out a little bit here if I can we have the voltage across this is going to be 12 volts and at this side it's going to be again the same voltage we had before so um, 1.2 plus 0.7 which is the figure we've got here so 12 volts minus and we'll just do it in long hand um, a tenth times 12 plus 0.7 gives me that so that's the voltage across that divided by 11 times IC divided by beta and that turns out to be 9181, so we'll use 10k ohms. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, the collector resistor, we said that we want to set this for half or 6 volts. So the voltage drop across that will be 6. And 6 divided by that 10 milliamps going through 
comes out to be um, 600 ohms, so we'll use the closest standard value, we'll use 560. Now, rules of thumb for the coupling capacitors, and I'm going to, I'm going to include this one here. Um, we want to be less than 100 ohms at the lowest frequency. I want this to pass um, from, you know, for, for voice roughly 300 hertz through to 2800 hertz at least. So the lowest frequency is going to be 300 hertz. And we know that XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC. So if we substitute in 2 pi 300 hertz and then rearrange the formula to make um, the capacitor the subject, then we come out at 5.3 microfarads. Um, that's for 100 ohms. So I'm going to um, I'm going to double that. I'm going to use 10 microfarads. So I know then that my XC, because because capacitance is on the bottom half, if that goes up, then that goes down. So that's going to be better than 100, 100 ohms. So I'll use 10 microfarads. So what I've done with that circuit is I have put that circuit into LT Spice just to do a simulation, just to get an idea of what that uh, was going to perform like and to look at the bow plot. So, I'm sorry for the reflections there. So there's the circuit in LT Spice. Um, exactly the same using the same values as we just, we just worked out. And what we can do now, we can simulate that and we'll look at it in the frequency domain. So again, clicking on our frequency and we can see um, that's what our, our sine wave looks like coming out of it. And that's with a 0 0.05 millivolt input. And that output there is, is up to around 2 odd volts. Now what I should have said too, um, for this overall combination between um, uh, the 3904 amp combined with the LM316, the LM316 is sitting at a voltage gain of 20, and I want to get the combination to roughly 100, a voltage gain of 100. So I want to get out of this one roughly 5. So a voltage gain of 5 is only around 13 odd dB, so um, it shouldn't be driving this one too hard at all. Now we just look in the frequency domain, AC analysis. We'll start at 300 hertz and we'll go up to 50 kilohertz. And if we simulate that, we can now see our, our frequency plot down there. So um, at this point here, that's 10 kilohertz, and way down here is 300. So it's very much got a, a high frequency response. Um, so what I want to do is I want to play around with these two values here. So I'm going to have a very simple RC low pass filter on the input. At the moment I've got them notionally set for 1 ohm and um, let me just double check that was indeed 1 ohm. You see it's sitting at 1 ohm and 1 picofarads so they have basically got nil effect. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to look at um, the, the formula for a low pass filter and for the cutoff frequency we're looking at 1 over 2 pi RC and I'm going to have that cutoff frequency notionally and I'm going to pick 3 kilohertz and for that resistor I will make that 1k ohm so if I substitute in the values so we've got I want 3000 or um, 3 uh, kilohertz substituting in and then solving for C gives me um, 0 0.053 microfarads um, and I'll use a standard value uh, 0 0.047 so on the capacitor itself uh, I'll be looking for a 473 ceramic so 4, 7 and 3, 0 picofarads bring back the decimal 0 0.6 gives me the microfarads which will be 0 0.047 so that's what I'll use for that and if I throw those values in now so if I just right click on that and make that 1000 and I make that 0 0.047 microfarads and then re-simulate and you can see now that we have a um, a better response. So the high frequency roll off. So again, that's 10 kilohertz, getting a much better roll off now. Um, and we're getting a, a sort of a peak gain around that sort of pick a number, that sort of two kilohertz. So I think that's okay for now. 
and uh, we will throw that into the circuit and um, we will have a look. So coming back to the amplifier itself, so that is pretty well in there. So we now have, that's that 1k ohm resistor. Oh sorry, what I, well, what I should have said is, um, I um, when I did that plot, and I won't move the camera back, I decided to double that capacitor that was running from that resistor, this is the RC filter that is, to earth. I doubled it from 0 0.047 microfarads to 0 0.1, so I doubled it. So I'm using a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Um, and that just brought that high frequency gain down a little bit more. Um, and apologies for not showing you that, but that's essentially what's done there. So this circuit here, like I say, we've got the input coming from a signal generator, which is currently running with an input of uh, 50 millivolts. Um, it's going through this fixed 3904, and then into a 50, so again, a 10K pot. Um, and I found this was the, the, the best way, the most stable way of having this circuit is to have um, that fixed gain amplifier feeding into the main volume control, which then feeds into and supplies a varying voltage to this fixed voltage gain of 20 LM386 um, circuit. And uh, that's certainly given me quite a bit. So when I do the, uh, the numbers on that, um, I'm getting... Um, 7.6 volts, if I just use the values that come off the uh, the oscilloscope, 7.6 at full volume, uh, 7.6 volts um, across the um, speaker, and the input uh, I was measuring 0 0.076, um, and if you do the maths that comes out to be 40 dB or a voltage gain of around 100, so that was sort of in the ballpark of what I was after. Now, interesting enough, um, the 386 is an interesting device and what you really do need to do is adhere to a couple of things. For a start, if I just now unfortunately to, to demonstrate this I'm going to have to crank the volume up a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the effect of disconnecting these decoupling capacitors which are across the VCC rail. So the red Y the red line here is 12 volts and I've got a 100 microfarad capacitor sitting across that to earth and I've got a 100 nanofarad capacitor also sitting across to earth. And the other thing I'll show, look at and I'll show is if you recall from the um, standard circuit for the LM386 in the data sheet you would have seen that 10 ohm resistor and what I'm using is a 0 0.047 microfarad or a 473 um, cap um, across the output before the 220 microfarad cap to earth um, and you'll see the effect of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the oscilloscope and again I apologize for the noise but um, to do the demonstration that's what you need to do. So I've now disconnected so what I was disconnecting there was that cap so I was basically opening that circuit, uh, the 10 ohm resistor, through that cap to earth. Um, you only get, you only see that effect at, at when the volume is up from zero, but it's quite noticeable. The other thing too, which we'll disconnect now, I'll uh, go back to the scope, drop the volume, volume up a little bit, and then I'll disconnect these two caps, and you'll see the effect of those. Um, right, let's do that again. Two caps there. Oops. Right. So we'll put the um, we'll put the 100 nanofarad back in first. Uh, that made quite a difference. And then we'll put in the 100 microfarad capacitor. Let me just splay that apart. Okay. So that's a um, and I was getting a similar effect uh, before when I was disconnecting just the 100 microfarad capacitor that one there I was getting a similar effect but that one there is quite noticeable that 100 
nanofarad capacitor. So it certainly pays, and you, and you see it over and over again through the internet to to decouple the LM386 very well. So I've got those as close as I could. You know, this is not overly long here, or this is slightly long here, this wire here, providing the VCC through to pin 6 of the LM386. So I have those decoupling capacitors as close as you can. So anyway, so suffice to say, it's, it's quite important to have that resistor and capacitor combination as well as those two decoupling. Um, breadboard's an interesting one. Um, uh, if I crank this volume right up, I get a little bit of feedback which I suspect I won't get um, once the circuit is nicely made and I don't have such long wires and that so uh, the plan now will be to commit this to um, commit this to uh, a circuit board and we'll go from there but uh, I'm not detecting the other thing which two people complain a lot about is, is hiss and I'm quite happy that if I take away that towel I am not perceiving any hiss at all, which is really good. Um, I have heard these before, even with the volume down to sort of near zero, there's that sort of hiss coming through. That's definitely quiet. So um, I'm quite happy with that. So once again, it's a um, it's a two-stage circuit. Um, that was the uh, the circuit we showed before. Subtly changed. Oh, my apologies. That is still there. That is the master volume there. And we just talked about those two um, resistor capacitor combination. Now, I've drawn this incorrectly because I was doing some experiments. I've got it now per the spec sheet in that this is on this side of that capacitor. Um, so don't don't make it up like this. Do it as per the data sheet. And we talked about those two decoupling capacitors there. So anyway, so that's just a look at the uh, the audio frequency amp. Um, like I say, next stage will be to put that to the circuit board and we'll just do another function, we'll make sure it's still working. Um, and for interest's sake, I know this is getting on to 17 minutes. Uh, what I can also do with the SIGGEN, and we'll just look at the effect up here on the scope. I'll just bring the volume up a little bit. Yes. So we're now scanning from one in fact, I'll drop that down to 300 hertz. So that's now 300 hertz through to 30 kilohertz. And you can certainly see the effect there of that high, we'll say again, that low pass filter. Just the frequency gets beyond that sort of 10k, it's really starting to drop right off there. So, uh, quite happy with that. Right, yeah, we'll knock it on the head there. Um, thanks for that. Any questions, sing out. Otherwise, we'll continue going with this and um, we'll work out what the next part of the circuit will be. Cheers, all.